Hey, and welcome back to the Business Career College video series. This is Jason Watt. I'm going to take a few minutes here to answer a questions floating around our discussion forums right now um, and add a video that I'm overdue for anyways. This is concerning CPP premiums and the CPP enhancement. So this program was introduced in 2017 in the 2017 budget, and we're going to see where it's carried us through and where it has us in 2023. We're going to look at the premiums. We're going to look at some retirement benefits. We're going to talk about taxation. Okay, so this is actually, this table kind of tells the whole story. Of course, it's got a lot of numbers on it, but effectively, of course, the first column is our year, but the next three columns, so the second, third, fourth column, working over from left to right, are YMPE, our rate, and our maximum base premium. Basically, this is what would have happened if we had no changes to CPP, okay? So if nothing had ever changed, that's where we would be today. In 2023, we would have a maximum premium of $3,123. We'd still be participating at the 4.95% rate. However, as we can see here, starting in 2019, so 2019, the first year we had a change, we get our CPP premium bumped up. And that bumped up CPP premium is represented in these next three columns. So the increase was phased in to get us to the 5.95% total that we're at today. So today, 2023, we've seen our full set of changes. That brings us from 4.95% where we started, plus this extra 1% gets us to 5.95%. So we now are paying potentially an extra, assuming you make at least YMPE, paying an extra $631 to participate in CPP. That's that total 5.95% then. We're gonna see in a few minutes that you do get an increased benefit for that as well. And then working our way over, we have the second additional amount, which nobody is paying yet, but starting in 2024, we're going to start to see that second additional amount kick in. And that's where we're going to take the existing YMPE of whatever it's $66,600 today. It might be $68,000 next year. We'll see how inflation goes. But anyways, you take that, add 7% to it. On that additional 7%, you're going to have a 4% CPP premium. So this $190 would be the original YMPE, and then times 7%, and then times 4% to get you to 190. This 389 will be larger. That's where we're going to max out. That's when the CPP enhancement is done, and that takes us to 14%. So by, by 2025, January 1st of 2025, your CPP premium in 2025 is going to be up to the maximum of your YMPE or your pensionable earnings. So take that times 5.95%, sorry, minus $3,500 exemption. I can't forget the exemption here. Times 5.95%. And then you would add to that the YMPE times 1.14 times 4%. That would be the maximum CPP premium for an employee in 2025. Okay, and actually, sorry, my math should be just 1.14, but times 14% or times 0.14 if you prefer. So what does this turn into? Well, we have then our maximum retirement benefit. As of 2018, you took the last five years of YMPE, uh, average those out times 25%, and our CPP max retirement benefit in 2025, sorry, in 20, 
um, 18, I apologize, for somebody retiring at age 65 would have been $13,610 a year or $1,134 a month. Now, when this is all implemented, if we fast forward way, way fast forward to 2072, and we have somebody who participated fully in the CPP throughout their working life, this person would have an age 65 maximum benefit of $22,902. Now that ignores all inflation from 2025 on. So that sort of assumes that 2025 is the last relevant year. If you wanna do a little bit more of an apples to apples comparison, if you took the 2018 YMPE, that is ignored all inflation from 2018 on, your benefit would still be quite a bit larger than it would have otherwise been. The effect of the enhancement here can be seen in that difference between the 13610, which would have been the benefit under the old rules, to the $17,065. So about a $3,400 bump to your CPP for that higher level of participation. It kind of makes sense. You're participating at a higher level. So when we bump that 25% up to that 33%, that's designed to sort of take up that slack. And the whole idea here is this recognition that the CPP has been good as an income replacement tool, but lots of people are not saving enough for retirement and we have fewer and fewer defined benefit pensions out there. So this gives us all a little bit more of a defined benefit pension as part of our retirement income planning. Okay. These amounts that we're now referring to are now referred to are referred to sort of the first and second additional portions. So the first additional portion is that amount over 4.95%. The second additional portion is the amount over your YMPE. This is now your AMPE, sorry, your AMP, your adjusted maximum pensionable earnings. Okay, and sometimes you'll see it called YAMPE, years adjusted maximum pensionable earnings. Um, we'll start to find out next year which acronym everybody settles on. You can see this already on your CPP statement. Obviously, you won't see any second additional portions, but you'll see first additional portions on your CPP statement. So if you look back to 2019, 20, 20, 21, 22, and 23, you'll see those first additional portions. You'll see second additional portions starting next year, and you'll see those in terms of both the contributions and the earnings on which you paid those. The taxation on this. So this is where I find a lot of people were struggling. So let's assume that we're in 2025 here and we have somebody who is making at least $79,116. For this person, their base contribution, which is gonna be YMPE minus $3,500 is just a tax credit. So we would take that 69.6 minus the exemption, the $3,500 exemption times 4.95%, that 32.62 paid by an employee is a tax credit. That's the way it's always been. So that amount is historically what we've seen. That's what I think a lot of people are very used to with CPP. Okay. Then we have this first additional portion. So the first additional portion, that's that extra 1%. That's what gets us to that 5.95%. As I said earlier, this is more likely to impact higher earners and higher earners benefit more from a deduction. So the government said, look, to make this a little bit equitable, we're going to make that deductible. So 69.4 minus 3,500 times 1%, that's the chunk, the first chunk that would be deductible. And then the second additional portion, so that extra, 7% in 2024 and 14% in 2020, um, 2025, that's going to be, sorry, I don't know if I said that right, extra 7% in 2024 and extra 14% in 2025, that's going to be um, deductible as well. So you would take the amount, the 69.4 is YMPE times 1.14%, so 7916 minus the YMPE, times 4% and you get to 
extra dollars of premium paid, which also qualifies for a deduction. All the employer amounts here uh, continue to be deducted by the employer. That's always been true, and that will continue to be true. Okay. Now, what about the retiree here? What are they going to see? Well, if we have somebody, and I talked about this a little bit already, but I just want to think about now the person who retires earlier. So this we saw earlier, this person who retires in 2072, it's a big increase. Well, the person who retires kind of midway is going to have a prorated benefit. So some of their benefit will be calculated based on the earlier rules, and some will be calculated based on the later rules. It's a fairly complicated calculation. Actually, I've simplified it here a little bit, but you can sort of see the outcome that this person retiring in 2023 has now a CPP maximum of 1306.57. Uh, if there had been no CPP enhancement, then their maximum would have only been 1288.33. But because of the sort of weighted portion of the maximum that now applies, we've got an extra $18.24 of CPP benefit being paid to somebody who retires at age 65 in 2023 with the maximum benefit. And that amount will be a little larger in 2024 and larger again in 2025. And we're going to see a second reason for a jump there starting in 2024 with the addition of the second additional portion that will cause a little bit of a spike again in that CPP maximum retirement benefit. Okay, I hope that's helpful. Um, I know it's a fair bit of information to digest, but if you come to this with a reasonable understanding of CPP, you're just building on that understanding. Thank you very much and enjoy your continued studies.